It's much easier to come up with excuses of why you can't do it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is easy, complain about your situation, your circumstances. You surrender and give up on your dreams. Become depressed and bitter and angry. Anybody can do that. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you're living in the past, you're going to be depressed because you are rehashing things that happened to you that are not going to happen again. If you're living in the future, you're going to be anxious because you are anticipating what's coming or you're wishing for things that aren't happening yet. Being in the present is where the gold is. Being in the present moment is where you will have the greatest control, where you will feel the most at ease, and where happiness flourishes. Many of you have been selling yourself short all of your life. You have the opportunity to experience more environmental, physical, and mental abundance. Someone who is in a constant state of elevation, their self-talk is, I know who I am, I know where I'm going, and I know where I came from. You have the power within yourself to change millions of lives by face of life. My biggest fear in life is that there is a final resting place in this world and there's a final judgment and you talk to something much bigger than you. If success is the result that you are ultimately seeking, you must be obsessed with the process. You have no time to let fear, doubt, failure, quit, negative thoughts or give up enter into your mental. Invest your energy into things that either enhance your vitality or the vitality of the world in which we're living. Because those are places to build a better world. To invest your energy in the negative things and all that kind of stuff like that, you're building a bad world with that. And you're using your own energy, your life gets shortened. And so the reality is consciousness is real. It's a currency. And if you use it and spend it appropriately, you can have a much better life. If you're going to be successful in creating the life of your dreams, you have to believe that you are capable of making it happen. You have to believe that you have the right stuff and that you're able to pull it off. Now, whether you call it self-esteem, self-confidence, or self-assurance, it's a deep-seated belief that you have what it takes, the abilities, the inner resources, the talents, and the skills to create your desired results. To me, every day is a beginning, a new day, a new week, a new shot at life. An opportunity to come out of the gate like a man possessed and attack the day without mercy. And of course, I will get tired. I will get beat up. I'll get knocked down and drained and I will have some bad days. But I will not stop. You know, if you start with the presumption that there's a baseline of suffering in life and that that can be uh, exaggerated by as a consequence of human failing, as a consequence of malevolence and betrayal and self-betrayal and deceit and all those things that we do to each other and ourselves that we know that aren't good, that amplifies the suffering. That's sort of the baseline against which you have to work. And, and, and it's contemplation of that often that makes people hopeless and depressed and anxious and overwhelmed and yeah. all of that. And, and, and they have the reasons. But you need something to put up against that. And what you put up against that is meaning. Meaning is actually the instinct that helps you guide yourself through that catastrophe. And most of that meaning is to be found in the adoption of responsibility. So if you think, for example, if you think about the people that you admire, well, you think about when you have a clear conscience first, because yeah. that's a good thing to aim at, which is something different than happiness, right? Um, a clear conscience is different than happiness. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. That's you're not better. Like guilting yourself, you're not feeling bad about yourself. That's right. You feel yeah. that you've justified Clean. you've justified your existence, yeah. right? And so you're not waking up at three in the morning in a cold sweat thinking about all the terrible things that you've involved yourself in. Mm. What you, you know, said to someone that you shouldn't have said, mm -hmm. or how you acted, or mm -hmm. lied. What or opportunity deceit. you lost, or the things that you've that you've let go that you should have capitalized on mm -hmm. and all of that. And so if you think about the times when you're at peace with yourself with regards to how you're conducting yourself in the world, it's almost always conditions under which you've adopted responsibility, mm. right? At least the most, the most guilt I think that you can experience perhaps is 
the sure knowledge that you're not even taking care of yourself. So that you're leaving that responsibility to other people, because that's pretty pathetic. And I, unless you're psychopathic, and you know, and, and you're living a parasitical life, and, mm -hmm. and that that characterizes a very small minority of people, and an even smaller minority think that's justifiable. But most of the time, you're in guilt and shame because you're not, you're you're not. Not only are you not taking care of yourself, let's say, so someone else has to, but you're not living up to your full potential. And so there's an existential weight that goes along with that. If you don't learn how to effectively, not destructively, because that's where most people go, they get into an endless loop of self-punishment, which is totally ineffective. But if you don't learn to punish yourself, you will never get where you want to go. Now, that needs to pale in comparison to the amount of time that you reward yourself and you need to earn that reward if you're just lavishing yourself with emotional praise and you haven't done anything then i think that that will cheapen it will ultimately mean nothing and quite frankly i don't think you can really bamboozle yourself i don't think if you try to praise yourself for stupid shit, i think some part of you knows you haven't done anything to deserve that praise but when you set a bar and you meet that or exceed that to then tell yourself, hey, you did it. You said you were gonna do it, you did it. And that is worthy of praise. And getting good at praising yourself is incredibly important. And I think that most people have a very hard time doing both. Most people don't know how to effectively praise themselves. They don't know how to get themselves, first of all, to do things that are praiseworthy. And then when they do, they don't take the time to emotionally reward themselves, meaning you actually have to feel it. It can't just be intellectual. You've got to actually feel that. And the same with punishment. If you say you're going to do something, even if nobody's watching, and you don't do it, then you need to emotionally punish yourself. None of you will ever know whether I actually get out of bed in 10 minutes or less or not. But I say I do all the time. But every time I miss it, even if I miss it by seconds, I just gave myself the chills. Even if I miss it by seconds, I will punish myself for that. Because I said I was going to do it and I didn't do it. So the fact that nobody's watching is utterly irrelevant to me. It has everything to do with myself. Now, the reason that this is important, the reason that I think that people need to do this is because that's how you shape your behavior. So like water over time can create, create the Grand Canyon or you can take uh, a polishing rock and shape stones. You can shape your personality. You can certainly shape your identity and shape your behaviors if you learn how to reward and punish yourself. I know a lot of people don't wanna hear that. That is the truth of the human condition. If I had to choose one pervasive mentality in today's culture that I would deem the most dangerous, I would select the victim mentality. Playing the role of the victim means pointing the finger at someone or something outside yourself for things that are going wrong in your own life. This has to do with something called your locus of control. Someone who has an internal locus of control believes that he or she can influence events and their outcomes. But someone with an external locus of control blames outside forces, other people, circumstances, or even fate for everything. Everywhere I look in today's society, it seems that more and more people have an external locus of control. For example, if someone is having trouble getting a job and they blame it on the current political or economic landscape, they are demonstrating an external locus of control. Or if they often catch colds and blame them on their coworkers or germ-riddled work environment, that's an external locus of control mindset. Another one is when someone is constantly in debt and they blame inflation or the high cost of living rather than taking responsibility for their own financial planning and budgeting. If someone goes through a divorce or bad breakup and is still in pain five years later and blaming it on the ex, that's an external locus of control. Essentially, we are choosing to have an external locus of control anytime that we are pointing the finger away from ourselves for anything going on in our life. Here's the problem with this kind of thinking. It takes away your power. By playing the blame game, you're effectively throwing up your hands and saying, well, I'm a victim and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. The moment you blame someone else for something you're feeling or experiencing is the moment that you give up your power. By giving your power away, 
you are making a decision to effectively let life happen to you. You are refusing to take responsibility for your own life. As you might imagine, that can be a very destructive pattern to set. In order to stay connected with our best self, we need to always take responsibility for what happens in our life. We need to find a way to have control, even in moments where it just seems like the world is out to get us. Sure, bad things happen that are outside of our control, but here's the key. We are 100% in control of our reactions to those things. We can choose to spiral into depression, anxiety, anger, resentment, or frustration, and just pull the covers back over our head. Or we can choose to react in a way that benefits us and those around us. If we fail a test, we can analyze what went wrong and study in a more effective way before taking it again. If we keep catching a cold, we can learn about how to boost our immunity and overall health. The list goes on and on. But the bottom line is that we have a choice. Blame someone or something else that we can't control or find a way we can take responsibility and change what we're doing so we can change the outcome. Buddha recognized the only sin as ignorance and by ignorance, he simply meant not knowing the difference between truth and falsehood. In other words, our only true dilemma as human beings is a lack of understanding about ourselves and the true nature of the world we live in. With more knowledge, we become more capable people. Without it, we cannot progress. The truth that we all must come face to face with is that we know very little about anything at all. Even the many things we think we know about the world may in fact be completely false. After all, how could we possibly say with certainty that we know anything if we only have access to the very thoughts that were planted in our mind since birth? What about the knowledge we have not captured? How could that change our perception of the world? We must be willing to accept the fact that we may be wrong about many things. It's okay not to know. We're all doing the best we can, so let's continue on that path and acquire the knowledge that's going to get us where we want to go. The quickest way to dispose of ignorance is to simply acquire more knowledge, however. It is important to do so with a sort of curiosity. Do not immediately accept everything you learn as fact. Use knowledge as a tool. Don't let it use you. It is easy to get trapped in a dogmatic belief system as a result of what we learn, but we must remain flexible. Life is our teacher. Let's always remember that. Change is one of the greatest symbols of strength and willpower you can find. It is easy to find examples in popular culture, movies and books, music, art, entertainment that reinforce the idea. Many speakers are great at building willpower. They often base their speeches on the stories of people who have overcome such destructive behaviors as alcoholism, smoking and drug dependence, although they are very valid examples of how to bring the idea to perfection. I find them too tragic. There is no substitute for willpower in any part of your daily life. You can build will by changing your habits. I view this trick as an opportunity to challenge myself. Try to get to bed earlier if, for example, you are someone who is prone to staying up late watching streaming movies or series. It may be a good idea to finish a book right before bed. Research shows that we get entertainment from the screen. If you read a book, instead of being submerged for three hours in front of the screen, it will take you an hour to get tired. This is because you are reading actively and not sitting still. Remember that a habit is an underlying neural connection. If you do something once, it becomes a habit. If you do the same thing over and again, it will grow stronger until it becomes an automatic action. For a week, you'll feel better. The second trick is to not be afraid of confronting temptations if you can face up to temptations without falling in. You are on the right track. This is something that can be very difficult for many people. I once read that fear only grows if it's allowed to. That sentence changed my view of life and helped me understand how things were. 
I became so consumed by the terrors that terrified me that thinking about them caused me to have spasms around my body. As time went on, I learned that there is no way to strengthen our will except to expose us to these things. These fears and temptations are all part of our lives. However, the real problem arises when your strength is lost or when you give up on your ability to control these situations. I take it seriously when I tell you that temptation is an infallible technique to build will. Is it possible that you are the type of person who is afraid to speak in front of others? You can reverse stage fright as it has been shown, but you must rise to the occasion. There are instant gratifications, on the other hand, if you believe that you have everything necessary to develop your will, and you do, then what are the chances of you not getting it? Be ready to show. Pass by your favorite bakery. You might even ask for coffee. If you are training yourself to become an independent Spartan fighter, you don't need to be worried. You can do the same with other temptations. You have already taken the first steps to overcome the bad habit procrastination. Now, pile up all the tasks you need to do and try to complete them according to importance. Challenge yourself 